Hello, welcome back. So in this film, I'd like to show you a little bit more about assemblies. We're going to finish, or at uh, least uh, make some more progress on the Saros mechanism. So what we've done in the previous uh, video is we put together our hinge elements into our Saros mechanism. And they're not fully defined, too, as you can see. And so it does have the ability to move around. It's got some limited uh, capabilities for moving. So let's look at our future manager design tree a little bit and take a look at that. So what we have in here is our fixed element, which is our base plate. We also have another uh, fully defined element because it does have a negative sign in front of it. And that is going to be that first hinge element. But the other ones have a negative sign. Negative sign, as some of my students have pointed out, is that like bad? Do I need to get rid of that negative sign? In sketches, you probably should, unless you want the sketches to be flexible so you can move things around. But in assembly, it's okay. What that negative sign means is it's just not fully defined, which means it has the ability to move a little bit has uh, some degrees of freedom in, uh, in the assembly. And we talked about degrees of freedom, so um, and what it has here is a rotational about the x-axis, especially that, uh, you know, that part that I'm uh, showing you. It doesn't have any translational capabilities, but it does have rotational capabilities, so it does have some degrees of freedom there. So let's go ahead and insert some more, more components. One thing, um, I did turn on my, uh, in regard to the assembly, uh, real uh, early in our uh, modeling uh, process here, where we're putting our assembly together, I did turn on my origins. So let's go ahead and turn those off. If we go to view, let's go ahead and turn off origins, and let's turn off our temporary axes too while we're at it. Kind of clean up the model a little bit and get rid of some of the clutter. So let's go ahead and put in some more components. Uh, insert components. We're going to go ahead and browse, and we're looking for the, the wheel mount. And of course, if we do the green check mark, it's going to put it right there on the origin. That's not really where we want it to go. But we're going to put it down here. We're going to mate this in a similar manner that we've done before. So with the control key to press, we're going to initiate the mate dialog box over here in the properties manager. And uh, go to the green check mark over here. You can do that as part of your uh, mouse gesture. Click on these two surfaces, put those together, green check mark, that surface, and this surface. Bang, that lines that up. So, right now we don't need any more mates. We're going to go to the red X. Let's put in our wheel. In fact, let's do this. Let's go ahead and open up the wheel. I'll show you a different way of doing this instead of doing the cumbersome way that you just do it. Uh, you know, it might uh, take a little bit more effort one way or the other, other, but try different ways of doing things. You might find uh, as you get more and more experience in SOLIDWORKS, you'll find that one me method will work a little bit better than another method depending on the application. So the more things, no, more ways you know how to do things, you know, the, the more of a flexible design you're going to be. So let's not look at our temporary axis here. We don't really need those. And let's go ahead and use some of our new buttons up here. I want to make sure that I have this open to the left, to the right. So I'm going to click on that right button, tile right. And then in this one, I'm going to make sure that's tiled left. So we're going to get pretty close to where we want to be over here. We're going to turn this. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this edge as a smart mate. And grab that edge and drag it in over here and actually click on this edge. So if you see that symbol over here, I can't really show it. Uh, you see my... Um, yeah, my, my cursor moving up and down. It kind of looks like a marshmallow over a kind of a green dot on a, on a yellow surface. That means you're going to establish a coincident and a concentric relationship with that edge over there. So it'll be uh, coincident with this edge, you know, the back end of that wheel uh, over here, which is going to be this surface over here, is going to be a coincident relationship with that, plus a concentric relationship between this pin and the inside of the, of the wheel over there. So those two surfaces are going to be uh, connected, are going to be mated. So if we look at that, the wheel mount now is fixed. If you look over here in our feature manager design tree, but if you look at the mates over here, we have a concentric and a coincident relationship. It's done automatically. So let's go ahead and close this out. Don't need the wheel anymore. Let's go ahead and open up another one. We're going to do this, uh, do the push rod. Now it's going to open up. Let's make sure that that's off to the right. Now let's do something very similar uh, here. What we don't want to do necessarily is drag that in, but uh, just for the final, let's go ahead and do that and see if we can pick up that relationship. It'll do that over here at the end. It'll do a conce uh, concentric and a coincident relationship over, over the end, but let's just do this. Let's just do uh, concentric, concentric. And that's pretty much what we want to do, because what we want to do is we want to make sure that that's lined up based on the pin that's in here. So let's go ahead and close that out. Maximize this so we can see what we're doing. And let's start putting in our pins. 
So we're going to do the something very similar with the pens. We're going to take these pens and use smart mates, and I think you will appreciate how quickly these smart mates come in when we uh, when we put that in into the into the assembly. So let's go ahead and open that up. We're going to put in our pins. I think I called pin two here. We're going to make that left tile, spin that around, and what we want, uh, very typical, is that edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a pin here, pin there, pin here, pin here, pin here, and pin there. We're going to put all the heads uh, probably here at the corner. I think it's enough room for that. So just like we did before, click that. Click this. So in a matter of seconds, we're actually saving minutes worth of work. Uh, the more productivity tools you can learn and things like this, the better off you're going to be. And it might be kind of tight down here. I think it just... Oops. Seems to have had a mind of its own, but let's go ahead and delete that because I think it would be a little bit easier just to do it this way. So, Okay, make sure you click the edge so the, the smart mates doesn't really work unless you actually select the edge. So it's a real, real tight clearance down there, but I think it, it'll still work, and definitely for this model it works. Now one thing about this pin, and I can show you two, two different mating uh, opportunities here. Within this pin, just because of the way I did it, and I did my, um, my basic extrude, first I did a mid-plane extrude, so what I have in here is a front plane that's right down the middle of that. And my basic extrude too, which uh, probably should be called the cap, is on the very end and uh, put a chamfer on this end just to kind of dress it up a little bit, but that front plane is right down the middle of that. So if I take, you know, let's go ahead and close this out. We don't necessarily want to save that. We want to keep the changes though, so yes. Maximize this. What I want to do is I want to be able to select that plane, that front plane here, and the front plane that's associated with this push rod and mate those together. That's one alternative. And the other alternative is that we're going to uh, do a width mate, which will do the very same thing. With mate, well, I was just like two different faces on like the push rod, and maybe two different faces on our hinge over here, and it'll put those elements right there in the middle. So let's do the first element first. So let's go ahead and click on that pin. And what we're looking for is the front plane on that. And then our push rod, let's go ahead and open up that and click the front plane of that. And if we go to mate, bang, it puts it together. Now let's go ahead and finish this. Let's select that surface and this surface. Meet those together. Now our uh, assembly is ready to go. So let's go ahead and do that alternative, which is going to be the, you know, the width mate. So if we click on the push rod or click on that pin, go down here to our mates, so we can find that one mate, which is the coincident mate. Let's go ahead and delete that, and then we'll put in the width mate, which is an advanced mate. So that still has the ability to move around. It'll still function. It's just kind of hokey if this thing's you know way off over here. It's still going to function as if it was closer, but doesn't really look right, so we're not really satisfied with that. Let's go to mates. Let's go down to advanced mates. It's called the with mate, and what you're going to be doing is you're going to be choosing pairs of mates. So we're going to choose this pair first off the push rod, and we're going to click on those two elements, and go over here to our tab selections, and then we're going to click on that face, and then this face, and you can see it adjusts, and it puts it in there, and it puts it right in the middle of that. So between these two faces, and then these two faces, the purple faces and the blue faces, it actually puts in that uh, that mate for us. Green check mark, green check mark again. And short of fasteners here, this thing is pretty close to being done. So I'm going to stop the film right here, and in the next film we're going to put in some fasteners, and then uh, we'll call this thing done.